I... Was this when we were attacking and people were confused with the comp? Yeah, Steve, Steve was just like, oh, I thought we were going brawl or something like that. Um, so we're running Arissa, Diva, Bapzen, Tracer, Hanzo. Um, against uh, a Diva, sort of standard Diva brawl. Uh, our comp is really good at sort of sustaining and taking pressure. Uh, and their comp is very good at like applying very close range pressure. Ours is very immobile. It will be easy for them to int onto us. It's just about how we sustain pressure. Um, as they're engaging onto us, we need to try and deal as much poke as possible. So the brawl is, it becomes slightly easier. Um, would be nice if Steve gets a few picks from like just random spam. If Steve the Hanzo um, gets a few picks from random sp uh, spam, but uh, I'm going to. Spectate you. Oh, that's nice. So your job in the comp is to obviously you'll be you'll be heal but you'll be heal button quite a lot. I'm not gonna lie, just simply because they'll be up front, like right in front of our faces. Uh, you'll be trying to get ult as as much as possible, and our ults will be able to create space. Um, a brawl comp will never sort of rotate into us. If we have a window up right in front of their face, and if they do still intend to int into us when we have a window up, they'll we'll we'll pretty much know the rotation that they'll, they'll be taking because it will be the one revolving most around natural cover. If we were to pop window here, and for whatever reason they still try to int onto us, then we know that their rotation will probably be around this side, and that will allow us to react to an extent. Uh, cool. I appreciate that you lamped kind of early there, because it is better safe than sorry. Um, some may argue that you could have held on to it until they were correct. You could have held on to it until the Orisa was sort of here. Potentially could have saved her, but like I like I I usually say, it's better to lamp early than to lamp too late. Uh, did quite well there. I like that you sort of pushed up and applied pressure. Um, you sort of... It's a form of in-game analysis. You sort of read the context of the situation. You saw that they were backing up. Which means that if they're backing up, either they're trying to force you into a preferred kill box, but re realistically, given the situation, the fact that they were picks down and they were just sort of backing up onto point, they were most likely going for some form of soft reset and hoping that their team could recontest. Um, it didn't look like they were trying to die fast. So the fact that you could push up and actually get picks on them and win the fight earlier. That was good. Good decision making. I feel like in that situation where you could have jumped on cart. Um, I, I don't know what's going on in your head, but you should put more emphasis into sort of looking around to see where they set up instead of just trying to put shots into the back. A little sort of jump, gain as much information as possible, that's a really easy call and we'll be able to plan our attack now. This sort of part here, where we're, we're obviously going to reach these gates, right? They're not going to recontest in this time, most likely. They won't recontest in this time, which gives us a bit of downtime to actually communicate and plan our next attack. I feel like an early window here could have been able to, could, could have gotten some value. If you were to sort of push up now, just slightly, 
and place a window where there's some sort of angle in this room, they'll definitely panic. They'll probably just try and rotate outwards. And this corridor is sort of weird because other than this door, which we still have sort of LOS of, if they want to back up, they have quite a long way to back up before they 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 get out here. And um, if they were to do that, they're sort of forced to go up and take this high ground unless they want to sort of take a fight around this bit of shrapnel here. Um, so either way, I feel like the window here will create space um, that we'll be able to sort of poke them out with. I'm going to see what you end up doing. Because right now they're contesting. Right now they're contesting. Nothing much is happening. Um, I do remember this Steve ult. This is a really good ult. Um, so it worked out in the end. But I feel like we had some form of utility that could have forced them out of this position earlier. Because that fight just went on for like 20 seconds and nothing really happened. But it's all good because this, this ends up working out, I remember. This is big. Oh, mechanical god. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't a bad window. They chose to continue to end onto us. I feel like our team really failed to follow up on that window. People were actually up here, but no one was seeming to shoot. We could have actually dealt some serious damage with that window. But, um... I, I didn't really see... Ah, no, nah, it was a big DM, to be fair. I was about to say, I didn't really see what the Diva was doing. It was quite a big DM. It makes sense. We've used the same amount of windows as their BAP. Their BAP is also a lot higher in terms of ult charge. I don't remember their window having high impact though, so I guess that doesn't really mean all that much. Oh, I see. That was unfortunate. I mean, Jagan? I didn't even notice that. Weird. Was he... Did he... He, might, he must have switched after this. I don't think he did, but he did say it. I think I have just wasted Dragon. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey. I mean, he's 30 to me. Yeah, he is. You sort of caught up with the old charge as well. You guys are probably gonna pop it in the same fight. This... I like seeing rotations like this because it shows that you guys are actually trying to think. That was really like a really... That angle that you took was really high impact. I think that was good. That was good because... Um, Again, I like when people don't necessarily fulfill like the role that they're meant to be playing in a team, but they use their own brain to sort of pull off plays. And that's what you did. You sort of saw a, uh, a Kree was out of position or a Cassidy was out of position. And um, you managed to delete him. So, yeah, that, that was well played. Chance kind of came in clutch. Good job, team. Let's keep it going. I'm just being really picky here. 
Okay, yeah, that was fine. I was gonna say maybe window is too far forward, but I realized you actually placed it behind the diva. Um, I like windows where it gives your tanks sort of an opportunity to step in front of it, so you can also heal them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, I feel like that window is fine. Although in this situation, in terms of like the Orisa, it's unlikely that she would ever be able to step forward just simply because they're playing brawl and they they intend to be in front of our faces and she's low. But um, oh man, I just rewound it even. Catch him back to where we were, to be honest. I wouldn't have personally lamped that because I feel like the distance that you're at and your second healer is a zen I don't I don't think it's very likely that D.Va survives this. I don't know, it's possible. She could have flown back, to be fair. We did end up having ult. Um, I would say, obviously, like, oh, if D.Va goes down, then she can just ult, so you don't need to lamp. But realistically, mid-fight, you're not going to be checking your teammates' ults, so I, I can understand why you lamp that. Um, was this a good... No, yeah, it was so high up. Like, it was so high up, I remember this. My god, that was terrible. Not bad. God, I'm getting messages. Yeah, yeah, uh, oh. This little angle here. I can see the intention, but I feel like you get more value from actually being with your team here. Do you manage to get a lamp off? You do you manage to get a lamp off? But there... Now, yeah, you sort of isolated yourself. I feel like you are very lucky that they didn't put your attention onto you. They could have very easily set that TP onto you and got on one pick. Even forced a lamp. But, um, yeah, you ended up dying anyway. You sort of isolated yourself. I don't think that that was the play. Um, I appreciate that you're still going for plays, but I don't think that that was the correct one. Uh, I presume you didn't realize they made the switch to Symmetra. Because I feel, I feel like you wouldn't have positioned yourself like that if you did. Yeah, I was gonna say if you if you jump, those shots would be a lot easier than trying to angle it. <laughs> but um, not bad. Oh, 
this is a good position here. When I saw you walking up, I was like, you don't necessarily need to walk up this far, but this sort of position here is fine. Do you remember? Yeah, May, May can get up here. May can get up here. They have a sim, and D.Va obviously has, like, verticality, so you'll, you'll probably get forced out of there. It's just, I find... I find some Metro Brawl so scary because they can kill you so quickly. But realistically, when you're this close in terms of payload movement, their enemy team is not going to be thinking about entering onto our back line. They'll be thinking about just trying to stagger themselves to stall and just kill Glock. But So yeah, that, that sort of high ground position that you took was fine. Just be cautious. One sec, let me just Alright, I'm gonna I'm I'm going on my phone real quick to sort of reply to that guy because I it might be important. But Attackers incoming in thirty seconds. Oh, Could we hear our main tank for this game? Mm. Maybe. I don't know. I can hold it on anyway. Oh, you're on the mercy now. Cool. Appreciate the fact that you're sort of hovering behind that cover there. You could. Mm, just trying to think about how you can make this perfect. You're not doing too badly now. Kind of dead. But. You're doing what you're meant to be doing, to be fair. When you see a diva, like I know it's kind of hard, but when you see a a diva flying towards your Faro, you want to try and avoid like uh, GAing towards the diva because you don't want to get hit by that sort of burst damage as well. Um, very small micro. You're very lucky you managed to get away with that. I don't know how the McCree missed that stun. Yeah, I would just back out. That's so unfortunate. I would have just like not even flown towards to be honest. I would just have rotated outwards and just walked out here. But um I don't even speak to this guy messaging me, I have no idea. You're right, Guppy. Yeah, I know, he just asked if I was alright. And uh, the only thing he sent me before was like a server server link. So uh I don't know, kinda cringe. I think Pika was alright this scrim. A little bit what? Steve also did very good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Steve was clicking heads on the on the widow, the forty crits in the on I think it was Junkatan, I don't even remember. But um that that is insane. I was spectating him, I was like, what is going on? Maybe all we need is Jericho not to be there. You should be at peak performance level. I am a power. 
You don't want to... Right. So... You're, you're obviously here. You can see Pika spamming. Preferably, you don't want to be staring at your Faro who's spamming in a different direction. You would also want to be aware of, like, the enemy's location. So you could really just position yourself here just to get more of an insight. I know you can tell... Um, based on and to be fair when you're standing here you are in, in pretty nice cover and you can tell by your faro's body language how close they are to us but just in general like why disable yourself why like make yourself blind to a situation when you could very very easily just see as well you know Pika could have been quick to reposition himself. It's obvious what route they're going to take. They're obviously not going to... Right. I know I'm saying this to you. Even though it's a point four Pika. But Pika's sort of hovering around here. He was flying, he was flying up. And sort of looking to see if they were going to go under. But since Kart is back there... They're not going to go under and take a fight against a poke comp here. We know that they're going to come up here. So Pika could have easily positioned himself here and gotten more spam out. I don't know. I, he was, I, I don't know what he was thinking, to be fair. like We could have gotten a lot more value from that situation. Because it was very obvious the rotation that they were going to take. Nice. You timed that res really well. The second that you knew that their diva was going to be distracted, you sort of managed to get that res off. Oh, that is so unfortunate. <laughs> the fact that your your Valk ended just there. Nice movement there. Pika only really uses his concussion to like move himself. He doesn't really use it to displace or just get space. I like that. I liked how you guys just uh, delayed an attack. This is like really uh really out of the blue, but one time I did that in a scrim, or I saw someone do that in a scrim, and they complained because it was a form of staggering. It's like oh. that is so cringy. <laughs> the form of staggering. <sighs> yeah. Oh, I 
Ich übelst kill. Oh mein Lord. So, that's the same person who was messaging me. Now he's talking yeah. in the channel. Yeah. The guy asked me to do it right. Oh my god. Don't, don't switch to your pistol. And <laughs> no, that, that, that was an accident. That's cool, but it will be that. Thought you were gonna ego jewel the. The echo. Whoa. That's unfortunate. The th like I say, I always say this when I board your mercy. But it's like your decisions are very based around like the far as they should be. So I don't think Pika should have assisted. He's uh, Pika saw all of our team were purple, so he came over to like help. Whereas I feel like in that situation, you just gotta try and pay uh, play for trades. So if I was Pika, I probably would have like blasted myself over to the Anna and just hard focus the Anna. At least that way, if we do get a recontest, which we probably will, or there's a high possibility of us actually recontesting, we know that we might actually be able to take a fight without the Anna as opposed to, you know, all dying trying to peel targets that will, uh, uh, they're going to die anyway if they're all purple, you know? So, yeah, I don't know. That's that's not anything to do with you again. Like you're you're just following to be fair, but I feel like your priority is fine. There was a like brief point in time where you were actually like healing other people instead of pocketing your Farah. But that was like sort of quite a while ago and then I, I was just like I played it out before saying anything just to see if you did man manage to put more emphasis into pocketing your Farah. Which you have been doing, to be fair. It's just I feel like our team is taking a lot of damage. Too much damage for our BAP to even sustain at some points. Mm. I'm just going to check the actual damage taken numbers. To be fair, we actually aren't taking anywhere near as much of what they're taking. Like, their tanks are actually just feeding their brains out. How do you take 16,000 damage? <laughs> so you get purple tear and you die. Is this unfortunate? You're playing behind cover. You can hear it, to be fair. Like, you can hear that they're behind you. You didn't see it. It was unfortunate. Like, you you looked away just as they were stepping through. Wait. Yeah, you looked away just as they were stepping through. You could hear that they were behind you, but I don't know. In the midst of things, it might be quite difficult. I was only really listening out for those audio cues because I knew that they were there. Okay, you did well in the sense that you were staying in the lamp, you weren't moving, you weren't trying to get out. That's unfortunate. Awareness? I guess that does come under awareness even though it's something that's very difficult to be aware of. Do you feel like you struggle to hear audio cues? Or was that just like a one-time thing or... Like, do you think... Probably it's because it's me scream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people are screaming and I'm probably also focusing on communication as well. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, there's some, that, that particular situation was something that's actually 
quite hard to be aware of. I like how you're hugging the wall. Nice, good boot. I saw the thought process. <laughs> good dodge as well. Mm -hmm. Good dodge. Uh, the nade, like, you saw the Anna for a split second and you saw the nade flying and you just sort of stepped back and it landed right in front of your face. But yeah. Um, good, good dodge for the nade. Um, you're making the right decisions. You definitely are. Oh, windows just gone down. In my opinion, because we're holding a corner, we don't really want to push up all that much further than this corner. Um, it's safe to just play a lot on heels right now and just keep on doing what you're doing in terms of poke. I like how you're sort of pe peeking this and shooting. Just be aware of the fact that they have a may. Be aware of the fact that they have a Cree. If you keep peeking the exact same angle, they're going to catch on eventually. Um, <laughs> the same angle is fine. Maybe experiment with like heights. Like, okay, peak slightly higher one time, then slightly lower another time. Just try and keep them on their toes so they have to react instead of just, like, pre-firing or something like that. But, um, right now you should play for ult. It's unlikely that you'll even get an ult, but I, I would be playing a lot more. Okay, but that was a good disengagement. I'd be playing a lot more on speed, but the, uh, no, sorry. I would be playing a lot more on heals. But then, for example, like what you just did when we need to disengage, switch to speed and amp it. Um, that disengagement was really good. It was a good reaction for uh, to the to the nano, and it was probably called out. Um, you just amp heals. Two things wrong with this in this given for a specific situation. We're high nooning, so amp and speed makes a, a bit more sense. Also, our Ryan Heart was purple uh, when you first amped. Uh, so you could have either amped speed and gotten value from the high noon, or you could have waited a couple more seconds and amped heals so you actually got the majority of the heals, like all of the heals. Um, remember I said try and play for... Oh, in these two situations, you can either try and play for picks, which would have come from speed in the high noon, or you play for ult. It depends on where you want to finish this fight. If you think this fight could be won here by getting picks and actually clearing it out and winning on overtime, that's fine. But if you think that they're going to end up pushing more and we're going to give more space, then we should be focusing on playing for ults. We have to play around what we're closest to. Um, and yeah, our Reinhardt is also pretty close to ults. So it made sense to just wait slightly more um, to get that amp on the Reinhardt to sustain him until he gets ult. That was a big stun. Yikes. Yikes. The enemy team should have just hard entered onto our crew. Even now they're, they're split. We could have put a lot more pressure in the front line. Wow. We ended up winning by popping all of our oats. I like how for the last 10% you were playing solely on heels because you realized you were close to it. You did well to not get hit by that diva bomb as well. You timed that well. You popped your beat a bit high up, so I was a bit worried. They have that Kree. Um, you could be stunned out of it. I don't know if you waited until you saw that the Kree pop stun or whatever. But those are just a, a few things that you have to be aware of.
What what SR is your peak again? Four four oh eight. Four four oh eight. Yeah. I see that. You're making very small mistakes. I feel like you've gotten past the stage where you're making like big micro mistakes or even big macro mistakes. I feel like typically main supports understand macro quite well. Same in main tanks. But um 